Hello and welcome to this review of Corbell California Brandy. This is the first video review for this brandy in the world. All right, so Corbell California Brandy for over 100 years, handcrafted to be extra smooth. It started Corbell uh, and Brothers started distilling brandy in 1889. Uh, yeah, it has won some awards. Um, It's all California grapes, so there's no out-of-state grapes. They age this in whiskey barrels, used whiskey barrels. Well, it's owned by Brown Foreman, so it would probably be old Jack Daniels barrels, old Forrester, something like that. Fire chart and mellow, that's the barrels. Okay, so there's a whole big write-up on the back. This is uh, distilled blended and bottled. It's distilled in De Giorgio, California. I was reading an article about that. They distill it in one location and then they send it up to Guerneville and blend and bottle it. And they use a blend of white wine and red wine. Okay, so there you go. Corbell, California brandy. Uh, Francis Corbell, the founder. Immigrant from the... Uh, German Confederation, specifically the Kingdom of Bohemia. All right. Nice little foil cap cover, plastic cap. Let's see what else. If you get on the Corbell website, it's the Champagne website, okay? So it's mostly focusing on Champagne because that's what they're most famous for. But there's a little box in the side that's a link to their brandy section. They make this, they make the uh, VSOP, the excess, which is the, uh, the excess is the um, spiced. They make uh, an 18 year age and a 25 year age. Well, this, this bottle was about $16.99. That's the only one they sell at door next. I'm sure if you get the 25 year age, it's gonna be very expensive. Okay, not a real cork, so well, plasticized, rubberized corks, no shock. The number one selling brandy in the United States is cognac brandy, it's Hennessy, VS. Oh, oh, I guess all the Hennessy brands together. Um, number two is E&J, Ernest and Julio Gallo, E&J brandy. Well, they're combinations. Number three is Paul Masson. Number four, Christian Brothers. And then down the line, Corvassier is very big. Martel is big. Remy Martin, of course. Um, this one is number nine. No, number eight. The eighth best-selling brandy. And I think it's right behind Deus. Deus. And I believe that's a cognac, Deus. Almost certain that it is. I've never tried the dose, but uh, a douce, however you pronounce it. I always see it at the Superdome, though, when I go there because the owner of the Saints seems to be very close to the owner of Sazerac and Sazerac owns Deus, so you see a lot of uh, <laughs> Sazerac products at the Superdome. If you get whiskey, it'll be Buffalo Trace, you know. Get rum, it's gonna be cane rum, cane run. So this is very tan, it's chestnut color. I think that's the color, chestnut. And the sun is partially behind that big tree. Luckily it's winter time and there's not a lot of leaves. Nice alcohol eggs and this little Diamore snifter. Uh, do I, now could it be colored with caramel color? Yeah, brandy can be colored. It's not a law against that. In fact, they don't even have to disclose it. They could, they can, they can tell you if they do. They're not required to. It's up to them. Martel VS is going to be the competitor. This is a very old cognac house. I think they're the oldest. They claim to be at least 1715. VS Fine Cognac. Appalachian Cognac Controlli. So that'll be the competitor. 
This is going to cost you more though for a 750. All right. Uh, so I'll do a taste challenge eventually. It's rich in the nose. It's um, a lot of wood, like, uh, you know, wood oak barrels, uh, charred oak. Okay, yeah, makes sense. And um, it's, I think they were saying on the website butterscotch, and I'm picking that up, butterscotch. Some people can't stand that flavor, butterscotch. I like butterscotch candies. This is definitely what I'm getting. Rich butterscotch. Okay, well, it matches up. Sometimes I'll try these whiskeys or scotches and... Um, the whiskeys it's got and they they give all these descriptors they're so complex and i'm thinking i don't get all that but probably me but this one is living up to what they're saying so think of a charred oak and butterscotch and what is brandy brandy is distilled wine it's sort of like i call it grape whiskey same principle awesome aroma I have a feeling the taste is going to be mighty fine. Wouldn't you love to try the 25 year old? I'd like to. It's so smooth. If you get E and J V S, it's a little harsh, a little bitey. Christian Brothers too. Paul Masson, not as much. Paul Masson, a little smoother to me. Um, Hennessy, yeah, it's real smooth. The VS Cognac brandy is very smooth. <laughs> Nothing harsh about it. This has some similar qualities. They're like that peppery note. It's like um, peppermint. Yeah, pepper some or spearmint. Some sort of mint for sure. I think it's peppermint. medium bodied kind of a lingering finish so like a long sort of medium long finish if you like a spicy product and this is not spiced you can get the excess well I haven't seen it around here since I bought that little bottle at one store but I think I could track it down at some obscure place here or there I'm not gonna try they might have well maybe they do have the XS the excess the excess at uh, next and I just passed it over because I already had it that one is spicier of course because they have added spices this one's pretty spicy though it's herbal could they add flavoring I don't know I don't know is this similar to whiskey no no whiskey has that strong grain flavor you drink American whiskey what do you get corn grits corn grits cereal grains which I could get used to never dr drinking again in my life um, brandy well, of course they're not using grain it's grapes it's distilled fruit juice which is fermented into wine then distilled okay but um it's just to me a lot nicer <laughs> um, but Every time I did brandy reviews, people say, when are you going to do whiskey? And that was like the main question. And no one seemed to be too interested in brandies that I was reviewing. I mean, there were some. Of course, there were always some people saying, I tried that, whatever. So, but um, do I intend to do more of these? Yeah, I do. Uh, but the whiskey is what people want, so that's what I'll do. And I do, now if it's scotch or Canadian, yeah, I can get more into those. The American blended and the bourbon. Um, well, I know there's a lot of fans of, the, of, of those products. <laughs> okay, anyway, um, this is a winner. I'm going to score it. Man, that spiciness. And I don't mean a heat spice, just like a herbal spice. Oh, it's great. I say it's a 95 out of 100. 95 out of 100. A most excellent product. And A, all the way. So, Les Les Bon, I'm going to enjoy this liter. And it's a liter. Okay, so I'm saying 16.99.
Okay, and that seems high, but we're getting an entire liter. It's not a 750, so we got to think about that. And it's real small where they write it somewhere. It's like very obscure on the some corner somewhere. I had trouble finding it, but it says it somewhere. Yeah, there it is, 1.0L <laughs> above the UPC code. So let's take that into account. We got to factor it down to 750 to do a good comparison to the other 750 milliliter bottles. If you want to try a really cheap brandy, you can go to Alperson's to get DW Anders BSOP, which will run you about eight dollars. Get, uh, at most stores, the uh, Hartley, which uses Italian brandy, VSOP. Well, it's better than the old ones. Uh, uh, that'll be about $8. That'll be um, a unique experience. It's obviously flavored with something. Anyway, but I mean, it's, it's there. It's an old brand from the 1930s at least. So, yeah, try it. Heck, Hartley. But really, you got to try this one. Y'all come on down to southeastern Louisiana.